Hello YouTube RJ. Today we're going to open a couple packages I got in. Circuit boards. First order of circuit boards I've got in since the tariff stuff went in. And so I've got some paperwork to show you and kind of fill you in on what happened with tariffs. How did this play out? Got an order in from Mauser. We're going to open that up and take a look at what I got. When you do an order, it's very hard now to know exactly what to expect as far as what you're going to pay in, in fees and such. Uh, this is all about going ahead and doing that and giving my viewers the information. So if they want to place an order, then they have a you know rough idea of what's going to happen and how it's going to play out. That's all it is. Anyway, let's talk about the tariffs. Let's go ahead and open this up. It's, it's my circuit boards. It's the circuit boards I had made for the J310s. The only ones I could find in the States were through like Mauser and DigiKey and they want like $5, over $5 a piece. And if you watched my recent video where I had an issue with an oscillator, I had bought a handful of those and one of them was actually bad. And if you looked at the comments, you'll notice that a couple of my viewers commented in there, they'd run into the same problem. So <laughs> not something you expect from getting a part from Mauser, but apparently those particular JFETs, they're not all bad, but you can get a bad one from time to time in them. So anyway, because of that, I had mentioned that I was going to design a circuit board specifically to accept surface mounted J310s and allow you to use them like a regular transistor. There's adapter boards out there, but they don't exactly do what this does. This basically makes a little transistor. Also got a silk screen. And my intention is to make me some to have, but to go ahead, since I had to have boards made, make enough to go ahead and offer them in the store for people that are needing J310s. In fact, I just saw some people complaining about trying to build the uh, solder smokes direct conversion receiver. It uses a J310 as a, as a buffer and people are complaining that, man, it's unattainium. And let's take a look at these boards real quick. And then we'll get over and take a look at what we got from Mauser. But the main part of this is we're gonna go ahead and make up some of these. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through the process of stenciling these, reflowing them, cutting them apart because of the cost of between the $5 boards and the having them V scored where they pop apart. It was extensive. I mean, it was like 68 bucks. I think it was if I had them V score as opposed to five bucks if I just had them made. And so what I did is I had them made and my idea is I added enough spacing between them. There they are. I had enough spacing between them that it worked just perfect for my little saw for cutting PCBs that, that I got long ago. You know, there's a video on it. I'm going to build a, a rip fence that lets me just slide it through and cut them apart once they're all done. I'll throw them in the ultrasonic cleaner and clean them. They'll be ready. I'll hang on to a bunch of them for myself. I'll put some in the store and, you know, maybe nobody wants any. But if you do, hey, there's some J310s. You won't be paying five bucks a piece for them or six bucks a piece. Uh, and they're genuine and pretty sure they'll work just great. So what the board does is let me get it up here and try to get a good shot for you here. Hopefully in focus a little. What the board does is, actually, let me pull out the microscope and show you in the microscope. So give me just a second. What we're looking at here is these little boards. They'll be populated with the surface mount version of a J310. You see I've got drain source and gate marked. It's in the same layout as a standard J310 in a TO92 package. One of the interesting things is you've got a pad to solder. You can put wires on there to make it into a little tiny transistor like a TO92 or the design revolves around if you look here I've got 90 degree male headers and I made it spaced on tenth, one tenth of an inch so that you can literally plug this in solder it and have a transistor with three legs that will plug right into a breadboard or you can solder that straight to your circuit board, or you can put pads on a circuit board, a tenth inch part, and plug it in to solder it. So you can use it different ways. You can use it with flexible you know, legs, like off of resistor leads off of it, or you can use these, or however you want to, but those two different ways gives you a lot of flexibility in using this thing. And these will all be cut into individual little units when I'm done. Okay, we're, uh, we're going to open up the Mauser box now. Now, what's in the Mauser box? Well, one thing is a whole lot of J310 surface mount versions to populate those boards with. Uh, that's one thing we have. And the other thing that we have in here is a whole lot of disc capacitors, as you can see right here. 
The vast majority of this is disc capacitors. And why did I order disc capacitors? Well, disc capacitors are getting hard to get. There just isn't that many choices anymore. They don't use them in cell phones. So like everything else, surface mounts where they're going. I wanted to get some because I'm playing with the Franklin VFO and I wanna, I wanna tweak it and try to get it as stable as I can. So I wanted to try using some disc capacitors. In fact, I have these. I bought a whole big assortment of all different sizes and such uh, in here. Along with, I had to order those transistors to populate the board with, which we're going to do in a minute. That's what we're going to do. We're going to populate the board in just a minute. I have all kinds of different size disc capacitors. Um, you know, here's 150 picofarad. So I have all that. But in here, I also have, lo and behold, a reel of MMBF J310LT1G transistors. We're going to need those. That's why I needed to get in here. The rest of this is all from my capacitor kits. These, This will go into my high quality, all my C0G and high quality dipped in disc. And I also have about, I don't know, I think it was over $100 worth of uh, silver mica capacitors from Jameco, which they were doing a clearance on really cheap. So... Normally, $100 of silver microcapacitors wouldn't be anything, but I got quite the haul because they had a clearance going on. They're, they're getting to where they can't get them, so they were running out, so they put them up on clearance, and I uh, I wanted to try some silver micas in the uh, VFO, so I snatched them up so I could have a, you know, a kit here of all different sizes and such. So everything they had, every size they had, I got it. I got a number of them. So $100 might not sound like much for silver micas, but I got quite the haul, you'll see. So let me set this aside. Give me a minute to clean this bench off over here because I'm going to need that space to do the uh, solder stenciling. So uh, I'll get all ready and everything. Come back. We'll solder stencil some uh, transistor boards, populate them. We'll reflow them. We'll see how they come out. All right, I almost forgot. We need to talk about our circuit board order and how all that played out. So here's what happened. I put an order in. I got 10 of these little PCBs for 490 and a stencil for 980. So my total cost was 1470 plus freight of 2415. A bank fee of 205 because I paid with PayPal. For a total of 4090. That order went in, they got shipped, everything went fine. I received these on like Monday. On Friday, I got a text message <laughs> from DHL letting me know that there was fees due and that there would be no shipment until I paid them. And if it, uh, I'm trying to remember how many days they gave me, it was like 12 days. If I didn't pay it within like 12 days, they were going to send it all back. So had no idea what it would be. So here's what we've got. Okay, it ended up being twenty six sixty eight. So you can see it was a good chunk of the cost of the actual cost. I mean, that's uh, way more than half the cost of the order, shipping and all, which I found surprising. And again, this is one of the reasons that I do this for you guys is so you would not be surprised and would know what to expect. I knew that the tariffs were only on your items that you ordered. So by ordering you know, $14, I didn't expect that much tariff. Um, I was looking at thinking probably 30%. So I was thinking about $5. Well, in reality, it was $26.68, but here's why. If you come down here to where they levied it, let me make sure I'm, you're seeing it. They charge a regulatory charge of $1.31. The actual import duties was $8.37. So not a lot more than what I thought. But then DHL charged me $17 to do the paperwork. So that's where the $26.68 come up. And you have to pay this before they're going to deliver it. And like I said, I think they gave me 12 days. If you don't get it paid within 12 days, they send your packages back. You don't get them until you pay this. So if you're going to do an order, this is how it's working. This is standard DHL. Now, we had that other service I talked about before where you can pay it's duty, prepaid duty or whatever, where they'll tell you before you pay the final amount how much it's going to be, including all of this, but it's going to include these fees. So that's where we are. Hope that gives you a little information, helps you make decisions of whether to put orders in or whatever. But with that out of the way, let me get set up over here for stenciling and we'll get started. 
All right, here we are. And we're gonna do a little stenciling. What I've done is took a couple of circuit boards and placed them down, taped them down to give me a slot to slide the board in, hold it in the same spot time and time again. I've got the little stainless stencil, laser cut by PPCB way, lined up. So now what I'm gonna do is take a little bit, normally I wear gloves, I'm not gonna do it for this. Uh, should, but I'll wash my hands when I'm done. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little paste down. Like that. Should be just fine. And then I'm gonna use, on smaller items like this, I like to use a razor blade. I find it works very well. Just have to be careful, but works very well. So we want the stencil to stay down. So I usually like to put my finger, you don't want to push down any particular spot and keep it that, you know, flex the, 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 the stencil up. So just a little pressure down, take this, get the goo on it good. And we're gonna go across. And this is small enough that all of them are gonna get done with, with this razor blade. So lift it up and look at that. We got a little bit of goop there. So now this board has no area around it to get it out without touching stuff. So it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge, but let me grab a little something here. Some tweezers on one of the holes. We're gonna pull her out. She looks great. And we're gonna do another one. All right. I will get this cleaned up. I'll get those over on the other bench and we'll uh, we'll go ahead and place some transistors on it. So be back. Back over on this bench, got the microscope I'm recording for you. I'll pop it up where you can see it. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna try to let you watch me <laughs> struggle to put a couple of these little things on and then I'll stop and go ahead and finish them. And then I'll get out the my hot plate. We'll go ahead and flow them. Let's see what we can do here. Let's get, let's get everything lined up as straight up and down as we can. That's always helpful. The least amount of parallax I got to deal with, the better. Okay, let's go in here and try to put this in. Be nice to have a pick in place, wouldn't it? Come on, tweezers, let go. That's the next problem I have my tweezers. Gonna have to grab my other tweezers and try them, see if they aren't better. So touchy. So this is a lot of work. And yeah, there's one. So 25 is going to be really. I'm consuming. Let me grab another pair of my tweezers. I want to try these. Here I go. Okay, so I've got all those transistors on the first board, pop them on the hot plate. I want to go ahead and flow them first before I put the transistors on the next one. I've got it rigged up. I've got my fume exhaust up here. When this starts to get hot enough to be a problem, I'm going to turn it on. So you may hear that. I'm sorry for that. But uh, let's go ahead and kick this thing on and start warming this. Okay, we're set up. And she's starting out at 23 degrees C. So I'll time lapse this because it'll take a little bit. But here we go. All right, 
right, let's see what we've got. This one right here is not perfectly aligned. It's 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 perfectly fine. It's not perfect. But this one, they're perfectly good. Yep. Good solder joints. They look good. All right, that's the first one. I'll get the second one done. Then I'll set up to cut them free. I'll be back. Okay, well, I couldn't get video of me cutting these things. I had to do it by hand on my little towel-like little saw that uh, I did a video on many, many, many months ago uh, for cutting circuit boards. Worked great. It's kind of dusty. Had my stuff to suck it and a little mask and stuff. But there's no way I could do that and run a camera or get anything set up. So anyway, here's what we've got. Here's what they look like. So I just created 250 of these. A lot of work. <laughs> Probably not worth it. But uh, I think they turned out really good. To show you what you can do with them, they're designed to be able to either have the three pin headers put in. Beauty of this is you pop these in the your uh, breadboards or make up a circuit board where you need to use these and put you, you know, standard spacing pads and drop them in and solder. Or the other thing you can do is add standard leads to them, like a regular transistor, just some old resistor leads or whatever you've got, a piece of copper wire or whatever. I, I had copper, I had a couple old resistors that I think they came out pretty good. Like I said, I made 250 of them. Hopefully, some of y'all need them. So I've pulled out a bunch of them to keep myself. I'm going to uh, put the rest of them in the store. Probably going to sell them in packs of five. So I'm not messing around with sending one of these little things out shipping and all that. So I'll probably do a pack of five of them. So anyway, this so this will keep us in J310s for a long time. No reason to have to worry about J310s. You just got a little bit different package. Um, I mean, basically, it's a, kind of a miniature. Notice the boards are very thin. I went with a very thin board, keep everything light and small, and they should work really nice. You'll see me using them in the future. So anyway, that's it for this video. I hope it was somewhat entertaining. You learned a little bit. And uh, as always, hope to see you in the next video.